guys before we get into the intro for this video I do want to apologize for the footage one of my cameras is having issues storing and making footage that's usable and the other one the volume sometimes works and others doesn't and now for some reason its focus is coming in and out so please bear with me and enjoy the video welcome back to bad attitude c10 today we're going to do some brick flaring for dummies <laughs> me being the dummy oh, i did what everybody else does it's in a bind and are on a budget and i went to harbor freight and bought one of their double flaring tools and i did not read all the information on them uh it's, it's a bear <laughs> It doesn't work real good. I'm gonna show you some examples here in a little bit. I ended up going and finding this other tool and I'm gonna show y'all how to do a double flare with it. And it's pretty much foolproof, guys. And it makes me look like I actually know what the hell I'm doing. So, here we go. All right, guys. So, here's what we got. This is the double flaring kit that we picked up from Harbor Freight News. And it's the Pittsburgh brand. And it comes with an instruction manual, the actual flaring tool itself, the tube clamp, which if you notice real, real close, you can actually see that it does have the taper in it instead of just being flat. So whenever you're doing your bubble and your flaring, be sure you use the flared side. And then we have the dies. To do our bubble. Hopefully you can see this. Flared. Flat. Be sure you use the flared side. And this is what the dimple looks like. Hopefully you can make that out. Alright. And what we're going to do is, we've already cut it, but we're going to go ahead and show you again. After you cut, be sure to deburr your hole on the inside and the outside. I use a seal pick first, and then I just go around it with a the pick. Then I have a universal one size fits all deburr. So we just want to knock any edges off. And then I picked up this deburr for external deburring. It's a unit size. I got it off of Amazon and uh, we're going to see what kind of a deburr it will do on the line. All right, just so we can be sure and see, we want to be sure that we deburr the inner hole. And if you notice this little outer ridge, we want to be sure that there is no lip on it. So right now it's just pretty blunt. So we're going to go ahead and deburr it real quick. Now you can notice radius itself this bird all the way around all right so we're going to take our tube and we're going to insert it in the 3 16 spot on the tool and we're just going to snug it up Once we get it snug, what we're going to do is we're going to take the die and we're going to set it in the hole next to it and we're going to make it to where the top of the line is even with the die so we can get the right height. And they say to use the little lip on the inside right here, but there are other kits that recommend on the smaller lines to go ahead and use the whole height of the flange. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so we got that, and we're gonna go ahead and tighten this up like we normally would. And dude, 
I have not been trying to bash Harbor Freight. This flaring kit does work really well on the softer lines. It's just this harder galvanized uh, coated steel line that we're using is really hard not only to bend but to flare as well. So if we were using the softer brake lines, this flare kit would probably work just fine. But for our application, I'm going to show you what happens. So we got both wing nuts snugged up. We're going to go ahead and put our die in place. So looks like that. Take our flare tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to tighten the flare tool until the die becomes flush. And what generally happens here when we're trying to push this in, and there we go, our die just went flush. It turns really easy and everything, as you can see. Let me get in here. It is flush. And we're going to break this loose. If you notice, it did not create a bubble. It actually just pushed it down. So if we continue to try to run our flare down on this right now, it, it's not gonna work. So let me take this loose and show you what we got. So if you look real, real close, let's see if I can find something here. It might be a little cleaner. If you look real, real close, you can see where the tube slid inside the fixture and we just got a bunch of grooves and it did not start to develop a bubble at all. So we still got the same look that we had previously. So again, we're gonna put our lime in the 3 16 hole. And we're going to start to snug it again. And you can either, like I said before, you can put this on here and get it flush the way that they tell you to in the instructions. Or in everything that I've been reading, it's better to just go the full height on the smaller ones. So we'll just set that right there again. And if you can see, let me see if I can get that there our height from there to there is right where it needs to be. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten this up. And what is on YouTube, a lot of guys are doing hacks in which they're either replacing these wing nuts with bolts because a lot of guys are taking a wrench and putting it in the wing nut and tightening these as tight as they can get it. And what ends up happening after a period of time the wing nuts are breaking. So, I mean, if you're having to use that much excessive force on a tool to get it to hold the tube properly so you can flare it, I mean, it, it's not the right tool for your application. But, so we got that snugged up, and a lot of guys are putting these in vice. I'm telling you right now, if you have the proper tool and you're using it on the proper materials, you should never have to put this in a vice to flare tube. So, got that in. Back off of our flaring tool real quick. Okay guys, now this time you're gonna see me struggle a little more than last time because it's actually probably gonna hold the tube and I'm gonna really be having to put in some effort to tighten it to create the bubble. So here we go. As you can see, again, we are flush. So we'll take this off, remove the die. So now, if you look real, real close, you can see where it formed somewhat of a bubble. So now we'll start to flare. So again, we'll take our tool, 
flare tip inside of the mine. And guys, this will work if you're wanting to struggle and get this done and you just have to settle for it. It's just, it's a lot of extra work and a lot of effort for something that can be done a lot easier. All right, so we got it started. So now we're gonna go ahead and run it up. And as you can see, your flush. This is where it gets good. <laughs> and now, once that procedure is done, as you can see, you have a flare. And I know a bunch of people are being like, hey, you're supposed to use lube when you use the flare and everything. And Normally, I do have brake fluid handy, but I don't. The only thing that I have is a little grease, and if I use grease on this style, it's a mess. Now, here in a minute, when I use the tool that I prefer, we'll get going. So here's this tool, and like I said, Harbor Freight, not bashing them in a bind. Yes, it will work. It is a struggle. You have to exert a lot more effort to use it. And for me, it's just not worth it. Okay, so here's our flare. Now you can really see where the ridges were actually made from the tool when doing it. So there's the flare side. Let's see if I can get this going. Now, this is a factory bubble, or I'm sorry, a factory double flare. So even if you just look at the back side, it's a lot more prominent and there's more of a ceiling surface, no matter which way you look at it. Let me show you what we're gonna do now. So, this is the tool I bought that now generally makes it look like I know exactly what the hell I'm doing, even though I don't. So, it's got a handle that is removable. Just because I say that, it's probably not gonna wanna come off. So you can remove this handle and put it in a vise if you would like. I'm just not gonna use it in a vise even though you can because to be honest with you, it's not needed. This tool does the work for you. So, I'm gonna loosen up these two 10 millimeter bolts. And we're gonna go ahead and cut the flare that we just put on off. Now guys, remember, I'm flaring this just to show you how functional the tool is. I'm not at this time concerned about being sure you put your nut on first because I'm not mistaking. I'm just not using this. This is just showing an example. So as you turn, you tighten your knob to put tension on your cutting wheel and you cut. So again, we're gonna take our tool into the end of this hole. There's no remnants. Then we're going to take our trusty deburr. And we're going to deburr. Then we're going to take our new tool to deburr the outside. Again, you can see the taper that it did when we deburred it. So now the inside and outside both are deburred. And this tool is quite cool. So, with the two 10 millimeter bolts backed off, you can take your tube, slide it in, and I'm gonna go ahead and snug these two bolts up tight by hand, but still leaving it loose enough that the tube can slide in. And 
guys, this is where I kind of make this thing over. You get a lineup gauge. So what you do is you put the gauge in the end of the tool and then you tighten it up, hand tighten. And as soon as it becomes flush with the tool itself, the little jig, you stop. Now, if you don't have the little jig, you can see this straight line and this hole, that's where you'll line it up and get the end of the tube lined up to that mark. But if you use this line up tool, it's always gonna be the same height. So once you get that in, they recommend that you tighten the two 10 millimeter bolts evenly. And as you can tell, I'm not struggling. I'm just snugging it up. Then we're gonna remove the lineup nut as so. They do give you some grease. Now guys, generally, Everything in the past that I've always been taught, you never use anything on brake lines other than brake fluid. Uh, this just looks like some kind of red grease. So be sure if you do use this setup, that you use brake cleaner and blow your lines out with air before you install them. That way you know there's no you know contaminants or anything in your lines. All right, guys, you look real, real close. This thing is marked and it says OP1. OP1 is gonna be the side of the tool that creates the bubble flare. So the back side and the top is gonna to both be beveled the same. Once you do that, you flip it over and OP2, if you notice, comes to a point. And what that point does is it creates the inverted flare for the mating surface in with the fitting itself. So therefore, double flare. Here we go. So what we're gonna do, Got our handle, we got our tool on it. We've already snugged it up. We're gonna start with OP1. We're gonna put just a little bitty dab of their grease, like so. And then we're gonna start it into the tool. And all you have to use on this tool is an 11 16 inch. I'm using a ratchet and a deep socket to make it easier. And we're gonna actually turn it until this becomes flush with our jig. So, here's our wrench. And if you notice, I'm not struggling. I know it's longer than the other tool, which is probably what makes it easier, but more power to them, that's good. And as soon as you get resistance and it stops, just stop. And then we'll go the other way. And then once you get it, you just unscrew your tool. And that is our bubble. Now we're gonna take the other side and we're gonna dab a little grease. Like so. And we're gonna put that side in. And we're gonna tighten it up by hand, just like last time. And again, our goal is to make it go flush to the jig. Hold our handle again, put the ratchet the right direction. Again, there's my resistance. I'm not gonna force it, I'm gonna stop. I got a little snugger than I probably should have. Then we're gonna take it out by hand. Get our 10 millimeter out. Give it a little jiggle and a pull. And as you can see, we do have a little bit of grease on it, so we're gonna wipe that off. And here's our finished product. That is the flare using the Titan. So again, 
Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight next to Titan. Factory Flare and the Titan. Titan, Factory Flare. guys that's going to wrap this one up uh again i'm not bashing anybody using harbor freight tools i use them myself it's just i feel the titan is a more consistent and easier to use for me and that's my personal opinion and only my opinion guys so i hope you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and join us next time for our willwood proportional valve being installed to our master cylinder